hello fellow couch potatoes welcome to my channel let's get to today's video Kim learned about her new sex tape leak and asked her celebrity lawyer Marty Singer to handle it I'm a pack for SNL and now I have to deal with this sex tape drama it's too much I have all the time all the money and all of the resources to burn them all to the ground. Let's just burn it. Kim needs to put this distraction behind her as she prepares to make her hosting debut on SNL. Okay, sorry we didn't help you pack, Kim. I just can't. If she needs emotional know, support, she's gotta pack the suitcase so she can fine. leave. Oh. Sure, that makes sense. Fast forward, Courtney and Travis go house hunting. And we just wanna like explore the idea of living in one home. Meanwhile, Chloe battles with anxiety before an interview with James Gordon. I just have such anxiety about going. Like just, it's never the interview. It's more the aftermath. I love it, but I just don't love it. Social media used to be, you know, fun and silly. Come on, make it fun. Definitely always trolls. And now it's everything is so critical. The way I look, my situation with Tristan. Kim heads to New York City for Saturday Night Live. And throughout all of this prep, Kim still fears the threat of the new footage from her infamous sex tape. I don't want to be thinking and stressing about something else. Okay. Say no more. And Chris Jenner encourages her to not worry about things she cannot control. You really can't worry about it. You're doing SNL right now. That's what you need to focus on. And I would put your energy there and this too shall pass. Well, I'll take your word for it. Okay, keep me posted. Okay, love you, bye. You don't get it. Back in LA, Chloe is having anxiety. She is still worrying about what social media trolls will say about her afterwards. Stop worrying. Just stop it. It's so deteriorating on your self-esteem, your confidence, the way that you view yourself. Do you want to talk about it? Kim has less than a month before she takes the baby ball one last time. So I'm going to go. I'll take Sunday off. That's all you need. And after two failed attempts, this third try is her last chance to pass it. It's more important that I study for the baby bar. Hope she gets it. Because I have one last chance to pass it, and then I can't take it again. She really is a genius. Kim meets Shuma to work on her monologue, and it opens with a joke about the sex tape. But Shuma advises Kim to not address it at all, since it's such old news. The joke still ends up being Kim's opening line in the monologue. Actually, I've only had that one movie come out and no one even told me it was premiering. It must have slipped my mom's mind. What? Wait, what was the movie? My sex tape. What? Thank you. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. Great. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> well, that settles it. But the joke on the internet yes. was... Please stop you making me blush. That like my mom had you. She's my manager. She had to right. broker... Right. It doesn't have to be like this. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hell no! Other jokes made fun of Chloe's relationship drama with Tristan. Um, oh, Chloe, you have the biggest heart. It's so big, it has room for Tristan and all of his side pieces. You got jokes. Oh, shit. Kim also teased Chris for acting like she's a sister and not the family's matriarch. Back in LA, Gordon gives Chloe a kind pep talk ahead of their interview. But all you have to remember is none of these things are about you. Anybody that's like, uh, it's only a representation and a reflection of them. I know. That's it. That's it. You're so right. It's nothing to do with you. You're what right. somebody thinks of you is none of your business. <laughs> it's the nicest thing anyone has ever said to me. The pep talk eased Chloe's anxiety, making her feel warm and fuzzy. Just makes me, it sounds so corny, but like warm and fuzzy. I feel understood because I know he's talking to me. After Gordon leaves, Chris says, Oh my God, did somebody take that? Definitely. Yeah. In Calabasas, at Courtney's home, Chris comes to visit, asking how the doctor's appointment went. Awful. What? The medication basically like put me into depression. I feel like I, I've, I've never seen you happier. So that would, you know, that would surprise, the depression thing surprised me. After Courtney opens up about her fertility struggles, Chris reveals that before she had Kendall Jenner in 1995, she 
had a miscarriage in 1994 that made her body shut down. I'll tell you that I got pregnant in 1994 mm -hmm. and had a miscarriage and my body entirely and depressed and you know my I was bloated, didn't feel well. Everything you just described, the yeah. exact same thing happened. Back in New York, we see Kim backstage at SNL as she goes through the grueling hosting schedule. And we read like 40 or 50 scripts. I've never done a table read before. Kim and her team reminisce on how far she's come since first rising to fame. Like a pinch yourself moment though, just remembering how far you've come. I mean, there was a moment where you literally could not even get a fashion show invite. It's either flip-flops or Uggs with a juicy sweatsuit. I remember like 12 or 13 years ago when you were going on like your first talk show like as a guest and you, you were so excited and i got that vision still in new york you know what i just want to talk to you for two seconds you ready for this chris takes a private facetime call in their car with travis and during that call he tells chloe he's going to propose to courtney i'm gonna cry I should propose to her definitely <laughs> a kim yay Hey Couch Potato, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you soon.